With moons in Star Citizen like Yella having a surface area of over 1.2 million kilometers, it can be easy to overlook wrecks like these, especially when there are only 12 of them scattered about the Stanton system today. But then there may be a reason for that, for what you can find inside of them. Hey guys, I'm Morphologist and welcome back, and in today's video I'm going to be guiding you guys on how to get to the wrecks of Stanton to allow you to find some treasure of your own, all of which has been made possible thanks to the hard work of two members of my Armco community, Ishtant and the Man on Mars, who painstakingly mapped each of their locations. But before you hop in your spaceship with that free flight suit, there are some things you may want to consider so you can properly prepare yourself for the dangers that may await you. So get ready to take some notes in your Moby Lass, and if by the end of this video you think I deserve it, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you're notified the next time I post a video. Which, by the way, only 1% of you actually have done. So against my better judgement, I've placed the locations of all the wrecks here at the beginning of the video for your convenience hoping that you'll stick around for me to show you how to get there and use this chart and then what to look out for so that you can find the right kinds of boxes to find the best loot. If you didn't catch that, don't worry, you can go back and take a screenshot for your personal safekeeping. Now you might also be wondering what the point is of going out to these wrecks to find loot. Well, in the case of these particular wrecks, they have special kinds of loot boxes that drop only subscriber items, which are items that were previously only obtainable through real monetary transactions on the RSI website. And actually, you still can't get them in-game without finding them in these loot boxes. Now, there is a chance for them to drop in bunker missions, but there's nothing like this, a box that contains only subscriber items. There are some other boxes, like gold boxes, which contain huge amounts of regular items as well, which are well worth picking up. And I'm sure at this point you're itching to get out there and find some for yourself. Before you go, depending on which moon you're going to, you're going to want to be prepared for either extreme heat or extreme cold. You can find the hot or cold suits in Lagrange point stations or in the orbiting stations above respective planets. So if you wanted the Pembroke, which is the heat suit, you can find it in Lorville or head on over to Hurl one to pick this up. For the extreme cold environment suits, you can find them at Bygini Point, Evers Harbor, and Port Tressler. There probably are a few other locations in 317, but those are the ones that I know for sure you'll be able to find them in. You'll also want to pick up the associated extra-large backpack, and then a multi-tool with a tractor beam attachment all of which may be more conveniently located on either cargo decks or refinery decks, depending on whether or not you're on a Lagrange point station or an orbiting station. After you've got the suit and gun, make sure you also grab maybe a pistol or a sidearm of some kind, and then some med pens because you may need those if you get hurt. Next, you're going to want to select a ship with an interior so that you have a place to put the treasure chests that you find, and so you have a ship inventory that you can store extra items in, which won't fit in your backpack. You may also want to bring a friend, though that's not necessary. It's just going to help you get out of sticky situations if you find yourself stuck or you can't get to a box by yourself. Though I was able to do all of this by myself, no problem. Then, finally, let's make our way to the first destination you want to visit. For me, I'm going to the one on Yella. So my first location here is at Art Corp Mining 157, and for this to work, I need to actually go directly on top of it before I can select my heading. The more precise you can be, the better, because with some of these, their distances can mean that you could be off by several kilometers if you go off course too much. Now I know some of you guys might be new. Don't worry, let me show you quick what a heading is. Look at the top of your HUD just below your signatures. There you'll see some numbers change as you yaw your spaceship. For me, I'm going to set my heading to 121, and I'm going to stay on that fixed course for exactly 42 kilometers. You may also want to fly in third person by hitting F4 to better survey the area. You may also be wondering how to check your distance as you travel. Every so often, I recommend you stop, turn on your quantum drive, and look back at your departure point, which is Art Corp for me. It just so happens that I got lucky here and I was pretty much right on top of the wreck when I stopped. Next, you're going to want to slowly survey the area, but I recommend you look for mountains and canyons because that's where they tend to hide. But if you were on course and selected the right heading, you should be almost directly on top of it. 
And you can see here that without any cutting, I actually found it within about 30 seconds of arriving. It's just inside of that mountain right there. There, you can see the smoke. Now, I actually brought a pretty small craft so I can land somewhere nearby, but if you brought something bigger, you may need to find a secure landing zone a little further away. This is why bringing something smaller may be your best bet if it's within your system. Otherwise, what you could do is you could use a big ship to get in the planetary area and then switch to a smaller ship with an interior to be able to park right next to the rack. But before you jump into one of the pieces that you find, there's some things that you'll need to keep in mind. These wrecks are dangerous for more than one reason. For one, there is a lot of debris and fire around them. The fire will actually hurt and kill you and you can get stuck in the debris. So avoid the debris as much as you can and try to find a clear approach to the wreckage. Once you get inside the wreckage, again, be careful because the interiors can also be somewhat treacherous. Not only is it possible for you to get stuck inside of them, but there are trip mines. So you're gonna wanna be really careful and take it slow. If you see a trip mine and you're able to locate the source of it, you can actually shoot the trip mine and blow it up, like I did here with level cap. If you don't though, there are other methods, which I'll show you a little bit later. You can see here that I found a safe entry point, and I'm gonna take it slow because I'm looking for boxes. I discovered in my travels here that CIG tends to hide these boxes in the periphery of your vision and behind things. And so if you don't take it slow, you might miss something good. So take your time and look around. If you do see a box, but you're unable to retrieve it, don't fret, this is part of the fun of it. It's actually a puzzle that CIG intends you to solve. There's a way in, you just have to look to find it. Now you can see here that although I did find the way in, I actually still took some time to look around the area because, again, CIG are pretty sneaky. Now I wanted to see if I could find anything else. And sure enough, around the corner, I found yet another loot box. Now these blue ones are the most common that you're likely to find and you can take them with you either by grabbing them or using your tractor beam tool to take them with you and they'll contain a lot of food items and sometimes tools. Usually though, nothing very rare. It's just to help you keep going. To find the truly rare stuff, you're gonna have to keep at it for a little bit. You might find it on your first rective or on the second or maybe even the third. The key is to be thorough and to keep your mind open to different possibilities like using this crate to get up to the mezzanine level that I wouldn't otherwise be able to access. Which eventually led me to find one of the most rare boxes that you'll be able to find in these wrecks. The red box, which contains only subscriber items. But you can also see why the multi-tool with the tractor beam is so incredibly useful for this, because you wouldn't be able to get to this box otherwise. And you can see here that I got some subscriber items. You'll also want to keep your eyes peeled for button panels and doors because some of these are actually operable even though you don't have a button that highlights for you to open it. You might just have to keep pressing it until it works. And well, that's what I did and look, I actually found another box in a secret hold. I think this is a bug for right now and so I hope that they fix this because it is really frustrating to use. But I just wanted to let you guys know so you didn't miss something good. Now, if you encounter trip mines and you don't have a clear shot at the mines themselves, you can actually use debris or a box to trigger them to keep yourself safe. Here you can see I use the red subscriber box to shut them off. Keep some distance though when you do that because they can explode and kill you. The last tip I'll give you is that if you do take these things with you, that you should not drop them on the ground outside. There's been this weird bug in 317 where they'll fall to the ground if you set them down outside. So hopefully that gets resolved by the time you watch this video, but maybe not, so just be careful. Finally, after you've gotten everything on your ship in your treasure chest, you can take them back to a safe zone and start dragging them into your personal inventory. Beyond that, it's up to you what you do with them. You can either sell them or keep them. The rare items I personally will keep because it gives me the opportunity to wear them and not have to worry too much about losing them. But whatever you choose to do, I wish you luck out there, treasure hunter. Until next time, I'll see you in the verse.